Okay, so The Boys Diabolical is an animated anthology series set somewhat in the boys universe that explores the characters and the Vault Corporation. The series is packed with easter eggs, hidden details and a lot of things you miss that call back to the comic book series. Even the title Diabolical is named after Billy Butcher's catchphrase and there are some major motifs they take from the source material. This is seen early on in the title sequence for the episodes which heavily features Billy Butcher's dog Terror. Though he appeared at one point in the live action show, he's pretty much been missing from the main series, however this little guy was in a lot of the comics. He was constantly trying to fuck anything he could, which he does in a number of these openers. Quick disclaimer, Amazon actually sent out the episodes for review earlier in the week in a slightly different order than the way they've been released. I haven't had a chance to work on my part 2 video yet as my personal life has been pretty hectic, so this will be slightly reordered from the way you probably watch them. Throughout this video, I'm going to be going over I'm Your Pusher, followed by an animated short where pissed off soups kill their parents, then Nubian vs Nubian before finishing with Laser Babies Day Out. Our second video will cover the episodes that we don't talk about in this one and you'll still get everything broken down when you fix this damn door. Now I'm Your Pusher very much feels like a love letter to the comics and each character here carries their original comic design including Huey who was based upon Simon Pegg. Pegg initially was going to play him in live action but he aged up a bit and thus they cast Jack Quaid instead, however Pegg appeared throughout the series. Like what we hear, Huey in the comics is Scottish and Billy also doesn't have a beard but he does have a much thicker Cockney accent. They open in what I believe is Vinny's comics which is where we met the character The Legend. A Stanley parody, this comic book creator pretty much detailed the entire life of the Seven to Huey including Homelander's origin story. Whilst doing this he held up an orange covered comic with the Seven on the front that is somewhat similar to the one that we see at the beginning of the century. In the background of it is a plane and it was during this moment in the comics that the legend told Huey about what the Seven did on 9-11. Issue 21 detailed how they were sent in by Vought as a publicity stunt to help a hijacked plane but they ended up having no idea what they were doing and thus it crashed. The plane crash scene was of course referenced in the show but it's way more messed up in the source material. Now, there's also a cover for one of the boys graphic novels and amongst the books we can also catch titles. These include the G-Men who are basically an X-Men parody that have their own show coming soon. There's also Cold Snap, a G-Man member, as well as Black Noir but what we're here for is I'm Your Pusher which is playing on the song I'm Your Pusher Man by Curtis Mayfield. This appears at the end of the entry and it's about a drug dealer which sets a tone for what's to come. We meet one called OD who runs narcotics for all the soups and whatever you want, he got it. Now in the comics we learn that most of the soups are sexual sadists that have sordid parties and we do drop in on one. Butcher hired Huey to run surveillance on several of these in the source material and early on these were the missions that he tended to take part in. We can catch several parodies including a Gemini man kissing two people, Pyro using his flame powers to spark up a strange substance under a spoon and also an elephant man. We also get a group parody that grows weed and it seems like the kind of party you'd never want to leave. Now the next morning, Odie opens his door to Terra and he's greeted by Billy Butcher. During their conversation, he brings up Jack from Jupiter and also A-Train who speeds by and snags a packet that has a shock on it. This could be a nod to the deep, though he doesn't appear in the entry, however Jack from Jupiter does. Jack from Jupiter is a Martian Manhunter-esque hero that appeared in the comics and at one point during the porn parody that Lamplighter watched. There's also a nod to Queen Maeve's depression and we catch her drinking a martini which she constantly used to nurse in the comics. Who Butcher is interested in though is the Great Wide Wonder who he's cooked up something for using Frenchie's help. After hanging OD over a balcony, Billy says you'll believe a c can fly which is playing on the tagline from the original Superman movie. After convincing him to do it, Huey and Billy meet each other at a park bench which is a location that appeared at several points in the comics. This is where the former met Billy and also his girlfriend Starlight. This town needs an enema and it comes in the form of the Great Wide Wonder who's being inducted into the Superhero Hall of Fame. In attendance are Jack from Jupiter, Queen Maeve and also Homelander who introduces Ironcast. I believe he's a play on the Superman character Steel and his name is of course based on Iron Man. Now the Great Wide Wonder very much has his own Superman moment as he jets up into space and then flies through the air. High as a kite he creates deafening sonic booms and flies through Ironcast's stomach which is somewhat ironic as we found out that he used to drink the blood of kids who suffered from life-ending diseases. It's a PR disaster but with all things Vought, the seven members play up that something else is afoot and they say that Galaxius has returned. Galaxius is a parody of Galactus, a giant space dude that travels through the cosmos feasting on planets. Speaking of feasting, we get Ironcast blood everywhere and just in the same way that he feasted on the blood of children, a seagull now feasts on him. This could be a nod to the opening of Suicide Squad but what it does is call back to the beginning with Terra 
who grabbed a blood bag out of the trash and it brings it all together to show it's all connected. Now if you're enjoying the video so far, I'd love for you to be a pusher man for that like button and also don't forget to subscribe for videos like this every day. I'm your host Paul, the soups who's an a-hole that likes to milk a good video. Now let's get into the rest of these deep breakdowns. So, so bad. Now the next one we're covering is an animated short where pissed off soups kill their parents. Like heavy spoilers, it does what it says on the tin and we basically follow some rejected kids as they get revenge on their parents. Written by Justin Roiland, this episode has the exact same animation style as Rick and Morty and Justin even voices a character called Papers later on. As we learn from the comic and series, Compound V was used to try and give kids superhuman abilities but what they ended up getting was completely random. The more useless ones were sent to the Red River Assisted Living for the Gifted Child Center. This is very much playing on Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters which is of course where parents that couldn't handle their kids being mutants sent them off to go. I don't know if we can show cartoon boobs on YouTube so I'm not going to go there but there's several comic book parodies including a quote unquote reverse flash that moves at super slow speeds. There's a beast boy one that can turn into any animal but he also gets their brain too. There's Aqua Agua, a water based character parody that's of course playing on Aquaman, Sunspot from the New Mutants and X-Men except this guy melts stuff with his balls, a Hulk figure, a human tongue and Ghost who's probably playing on Ghost from the MCU. Now telling all of this is a slick narrator who's voiced by Christian Slater. But I'm not a rapper. Now after learning the truth about Compound V, they seek revenge on their self-centered parents and head out on a killing spree. This is to the sound of Hootie and the Blowfish, I Only Wanna Be With You, which we learned at the start was the only song that Boombox could play. We see slow-mo choke his dad, there's actually a picture of him crossing a finish line at a race, which is a bit ironic as his son moves so slow. Fang's dad has a cap that says Fang's dad and behind him is a post up at A-Train. We can also see that Ghost's parents have several Queen Maeve wine bottles in their fridge, along with some delicious milk. Now after murdering her father in a very brutal manner, the Homelander shows up, probably to take the fridge and he spam attacks his eye lasers, wiping out everyone except Ghost. She swears to her mother she'll be back and we close out on the narrator narrating his dad's death and how he scooped his face off with a spoon before he started wearing it. We cut to his baby pics with a smile being put across one with a blood stain just like the Joker. Joker is known as an unreliable narrator and, and is that an easter egg? I don't, I don't know but let's move on before we think too much. Now that takes us into Nubian vs Nubian, the both of which are major parodies of Storm and Black Panther. In case you don't know, the pair are actually married in the comics and they even put on African accents at points from the MCU movies. Now she appeared in comics whilst he showed up in season 1 and they're voiced by Aisha Taylor and Don Cheadle respectfully. We open with Groundhog robbing a bank and if you're familiar with the source material, you'll likely recognize him as being the leader of the G-Men. Like the comics, he has hammers for hands and can't even play his VS5, which is of course a Vault Games console. Voiced by John DiMaggio, aka the man behind Bender and Futurama, we learn this opening is a staged PR stunt carried out by Vought. Nubia and the prince fall in love whilst fighting him and we find out that they had a daughter together. Now over the last 8 years, they've slowly fallen out of love and she goes to Groundhawk to ask him to fight her parents once more to stop their divorce. At night, the prince reads his daughter a story and this somewhat feels like it's in the same vein as the opening of Black Panther. In her mother's phone, she finds Groundhawk's number and amongst the contacts, we can see A-Train and Big Game, the both of which appeared in the comics. There's also Gunpowder, a retired soups that was a member of Payback. At one point, Nubian Prince mentions the Young Americans, another team from the graphic novels who like having their buttholes popped. She goes to Groundhawk and after convincing him to save her parents' marriage, they beat the seven shades of shit out of him. Now they bring up that they're not even in the same continuity this season and it's kind of a joke at this point how convoluted everything seems to be with there being multiple versions of the same characters across different timelines. Beating the crap out of him makes them fall in love and due to Nubia's weather powers, she causes a storm that night. In the morning, they get handed their divorce papers after arguing about buying coffee and that brings the episode to a close. Now the final entry we're breaking down this video is a Looney Tunes knockoff that seems to be pulling on the cartoon Buddy's Day Out. This was later adapted into things like the Tom and Jerry episode Busy Buddies and the movie Baby's Day Out. Now initially, we follow a vault worker who attends a lab where the super kids are created. Beside his bed, we can catch a Vorderberger cub and he goes past the adoption center into one of the labs. A similar environment popped up in the first season and much like what we have here, there was a baby that could shoot lasers out of its eyes. Behind the holding doors, we can see an electrical kid, one that can spray poisonous gas and the titular baby. 
This is the final day of her trial and he concludes that she has no control over her powers. In his office we see a poster for Starlight and after finding out the baby is due to be terminated, he launches a rescue attempt. The villain of this episode is a soups with a giant brain and he feels like he's based upon the Hulk character who's known as the leader. He also wears an outfit similar to Darkwing Duck which if you're a 90s baby you should recognise. If you don't and you had no childhood and I don't want you watching this video. Get the, get the hell out of my sight. See you chump. Now after going to the zoo, the SWAT team aim their guns at her but she goes achoo and fires the lasers achoo. Best jokes around. Oh Kate Bishop, you are so funny. That's hilarious. That one is the funniest. <laughs> Inside the zoo we see crocodiles based on the one from the Disney Peter Pan film and also piranhas that look like flounder from The Little Mermaid. There's also a cardboard cutout of the deep and a gorilla which kills some of the vault soldiers. The baby in Baby's Day Out also got an gorilla pen and this helped out, which I think this scene might be a homage to. Now one of the SWAT, I sound so posh saying homage, very, very sophisticated breakdowns at the channel. Now one of the SWAT team members ends up burning themselves with a flamethrower and they come out looking like Wiley e. Coyote who used to have this happen to him quite a lot. Things culminate at a construction site which is where a lot of these sorts of episodes often tend to wind up with the baby crawling across a steel girder similar to Baby's Day Out. She wants the big jitter bean ball which is a coffee company that appeared in the previous episode and it shows up throughout the season. The leader arrives to kill them and the kid finally gets control of her powers and she cuts his head in half. Calling the guy Dada, the pair take down the forces of Vought with her being aimed like Billy used the baby in the first season. That's all boys and this concludes the first part of our diabolical breakdown. I have to say I really really enjoyed it and obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the show below. We are going to be dropping our part 2 video very soon so make sure you subscribed and if you want something else to watch then check out our breakdown of the Batman which will be linked on screen right now. It's one of the best videos we've ever made, which isn't that hard let's be honest and I'd love to see you over there right after this. With that out of the way, I've been Paul, you've been the best, you know you have and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, peace.